Mission 2, Arosa Southbound. Welcome to Shore Station. You're assigned the first service today with some added freight wagons. Get on the train. Ah, okay, fair enough once again. Uh, hey there, Joy here, and welcome back to the Arosa line. Today, back in the uh, G4 Strike 4 Mark II, running from Shore to Arosa, it's heading southbound today, running a four car set of a couple of freight wagons you can see on the sideline for us to take with us as well. So, set the train up, jump into the driver's seat, prepare ourselves for a no departure, and then get ourselves out here to go. So, first train, four set up, fast key on, reverse set forward. Uh, train vacuum brake to released. Also set the lights to headlights three. Logo brake off. And of course we can hit the uh, wipers as well, wouldn't we? And stop location, sure north. There we go. Right, so um, what we're doing is running up to the stop marker just outside of the track here. They're going to collect the freight wagon. It's got four sets of logs to drag with us today. Start so centering down. And as soon as you collect that, we'll head into Shure's platform two, collect passengers there, and then start our trip down to Arosa. It's going to be about an hour or so of service today. We'll have a look at the uh, service passengers also, see what station we're stopping at. Around today, perfect. So, stop. Put for us at sets. I'll do it correctly. There we go. Uh, contact signal. Just confirm that we're ready to reverse. There we go. Proceed at reduced speed. Let's get our wagons. So nice and slowly, we roll back downhill. You can see the signal's been given a yellow slash there, so on top right slash is alerting to me that the signal's been cleared for me to pass them through it. We're now trying to roll down the hill, so not playing any power at the moment, we're trying to roll on gravity, but as we get closer to the wagons, we'll then start slowing things down, and then halt it just before we connect. This is a manual cup we've got to do, so no point crashing into it. Light pressure needs to be made, so a little bit of braking, slow things down. And halt, couple together, and there we go, train all formed. We'll now move the reverser back into the forward position. We will release all the brakes. Apply some power, and let's roll over to uh, Shield Platform 2, arrive there for 16.20, about a minute and a half or so to travel the half a kilometre. It's definitely a bit tight. Should be alright, so travel into this platform, check our service pattern like I say, and then press ourselves for it today. Actually, do we check our service pattern? I'm not too sure. Because a lot of the stations, like I say in the last video, well, yesterday video, we talked about all stations having request buttons. And therefore, as a driver, I don't think I actually know my service pattern until I actually start driving anyway. Because what I'll be looking out for is a green light on the little dashboard there, a little green light on the left. And that essentially tells me where I'm going today. So, I don't know. Maybe we won't check our service pattern. We'll leave that to kind of randomise our journey goes to the heads, just to kind, kind of make it more. More dynamic, more like the real field driving this route. It's almost cheating to see uh, where we're stopping today. Although, being the first train of the day, unless there's a train at Rosa, which uh, leads from the depot over there. I don't know if there's a depot there or not. Sand Depot, of course, being the main depot of this line. Don't know if there's one then at Rosa or not, so I'll have to double check at some point. But essentially, the question is do we cross another train? Or do we have the entire line to ourselves? Which, uh, at least for me, makes it a little easier to drive. No crossover points, no uh, transitions. Just straight start to finish. No problems 
talk. Right. Chain stops. Doors open. We have about 25 seconds until departure. So I'll move my camera over to the uh, signal box. Open that. And since you are waiting now for the passengers to board, wait for the air circle to fill, close the doors, press the button, and then make our own way out. The weather massively cleared up from last time, so no more snow, no more loads of visibility. It's an early morning sunrise run with clear skies all throughout. And of course, a little moon as well on top, just to enjoy all of that. Ah, it's a moving moon as well. <laughs> right. Doors close. Press the button, clears the depart, close the door, brakes released, and train departs. Next station, Shrill Stats. Yes, short out that, short stats, next station. To the you can see cars crossing over the uh, road there. In a second or two, that will now stop. Go. Cars now stopped. Now I'm across my path. I'm trying to get priority to run down through the middle. And so this happens at two lo locations here on the uh, short side of things. We've got the roundabouts passing through now, and later on, there's like a little uh, crossroad as well that cars do cross through. But again, as our train approaches, I'm going to drive to a halt. Six in the morning, I can't imagine there being too much traffic at the sound of day. A bit fast there, bring the brakes on. But as the train clears the location, the car will momentarily and starts to drive back through again. So I presume somewhere on the route there'll be like a trigger point. As soon as the train hits that trigger point, there you go. The car now starts to move again. It's very smart to detect that. Very smart bit of code just to keep everything running smoothly and realistically as well. And I did talk about in the last video as well. While it may not be, it's a pretty route that has a few flaws in regards to long distance scenery, but the tech behind it is very good. There it goes. So these cars are now stationary and will allow my train to pass through first before they start their own journey. A bit of power in. At least we turn the wheels to high power. Just wait for the Antarctic to kick in. There we go. Stopping very, very shortly. In a few seconds. Door released. I don't think there's a phone for us to uh, activate here. Nope. So, car has on the train. Passengers aboard. Departure in about five seconds. Just too shy there. There we go. Brakes released. And next station, Lewin Cassiel, platform two. Six and a half kilometers to our first stop today. We will have a similar pulling pattern to the first run we did yesterday. Although we potentially do stop at some piece of Mullins today. That we'll find out shortly. Let's have a look at it now. So, Bill Castiel, Peter Mullins. Can't scroll on it. But yeah, we do stop at the next two stations today. Slowly, to it will start to come up again. So, up to 25. As we pass through the sands, um, short sands depot up to 30. And as we break away from the traffic road up to 35, as dark climb the mountains. This is an uphill portion, so unlike last time when we were on the brakes for the whole journey, on this occasion we're now on the throttle. So this is the big one for me is like, no, the train has most kind of gaps where you don't pick up power for a few seconds. If I go as far as cutting the power, Potentially, that causes me to lose everything basically, so it's a very, very fine game this. Likewise, if you travel too slow, 
runs the risk of uh, stopping and rolling back here as well. I mean, braking's okay, fair enough. Braking, you go too fast, you derail, you downside of the hill. This, a bit more risky for us, you can go backwards, and going backwards is definitely no bueno in this route. Well, turn that back. We're not stopping at uh, Castiel. We're going by location, and we're going by location to Peace Morning. So actually, we're stopping at um, Price today is our first stop. We do not stop at the first two stations. A tiny bit of power now. Five. Oops. And to find that sweet spot, which isn't always simple. There you go, so we've got no power now. Power's back. Speed increases to 30. Power again. So this isn't that two marker there. Two, three, that seems to be kind of the lowest you can go before everything starts to uh, roll on you. And it's 1.5. Now there's nothing. So it's a very tedious, tedious control pattern. This find the right point. If I do that, I'll try keyboard a moment. See if that's any easier for me. Probably not, because again, let's find that exact marker. Braking is very good. Throttle. There's no inputs right now. There we go. Power's been found. Train starts to accelerate again. Goes to 33 now. Power's dropped. Power's regained. Mm -hmm. So unless there's a trick to train that I just don't quite know yet. There you go. 2.5 drops. How does regain but after a big big drop that you just can't recover from? I think we're now finding it so seven six for about thirty seven for thirty two thirty three time gets at the moment it's like the braking using about seventy uh sorry, sixty eight for the downhill six degree gradient here throttle worse setting seven be sure to remember that now for the future. 7 6 seems to be the sweet spots. And it all comes down to where in the line you're running. But the braking, definitely much easier than the acceleration. the uh, rod drive on this occasion just because the actual 7 marker is right where the muscle controller kind of splits and that is a dead zone so I'm going to do some keyboard I'd say Wait for power to pull, increase the power, get that train up to speed again and then coast on 7 with the keyboard the more you learn I guess 
So now that I've kind of got the hands on the control, the rest of the journey should go uh, swimmingly. We are going to be behind, uh, a little bit behind schedule. That won't cause too many problems for us. Ultimately, if the rest of the run goes without any problems, then we definitely will be able to pick this time up without any problems later on. 34, we're within a mile of the uh, speed limit there, that's not a problem. The 6 the hill gradient will start to bleed off eventually. Very, very pretty run again. Early in the morning, train running the sunrise. And that orangey glow over the valley definitely adds to the, uh, to the scenic valley that's roots. Long drawn shadows. Very, very pretty scene. As we to our journey, there will be a few things for us to look out for as well on this journey. Um, yes, Lumen Pass the Elts, Peter Mullins we won't be stopping at. Pies through to Langvoice, a bit of speed control for us to work with. Of course, the um, St Peter Mullins Pies short section as well, got a lot of bumping to work on. And then the bridge out of uh, Langvoice, the curve track at Lidzeriti. It's a lot for us to enjoy. A lot for us to enjoy. And train again, the four stroke four mark two. Very fun to play with. But I have noted a little bit of stringing in the uh, scenery. Essentially what's happened is in train well, it's a thing of Unreal Engine in regards to how these pipe visits work. As you leave one blocker track, or at least one scenery block to another scenery block. Well, the train itself is fine, these bits of physics kind of jump, they teleport, they go from one scene to another, and therefore as a result they kind of stretch. And so you will see very rarely, but definitely there, like a black mark through the sky, that's our brake pipe stretching across the map as it kind of goes from one chunk to another. So I thought that I have massively reduced, so if you remember the original Train to Mars Great Western release back in 2016, that was really bad for it, just to leave that of um, Paddington's Reading. So, definitely see massive improvements. Not quite there yet. To be fair, no snow. We can have cab lights on today if we really wanted to. But, we are following real life regulations. So, cab lights off. No, uh, no glare today. It's actually that. 3.5 wheel direction there. Seven mark on throttle. That's, that's pretty good. Regardless of the uh, gradient climb there. That seven is the sweet spot. Speed slightly, drop it down to 33. Maybe a little bit faster, I guess, on the nose there for 33 at the moment, just because I had catch up time there. And so, what, 34 on a 33 line won't cause any problems. But I'm, again, trying to avoid the red zone. If you're tightening red on the speedometer, that's a big sign of danger, and therefore, well, <laughs> you don't want to hit that bit, that's for sure. Again, it goes back to the original stream we did for the Eraser line, where as soon as you hit a red signal, well, it was really a red signal problem, it was again more of the track thing, where the moment you hit the points at high speed, the train, uh, in fact, this point here was one of the big ones for me, the train was not on the track anymore, which is a problem. Believe this or not, the train starts to derail. Uh, there we go. Very, very photogenic this route as well. 
get the right angles, the right scenes, less trees in the background. It's all there for you to enjoy. And it's one of my favourites, Roast Line. Even with its problems, even with its quirks, it's definitely one of the better ones, in my opinion, for Train Sim World. I understand the criticism it has. I do understand why people have a problem with it. So again, I agree as well. The trees in the background, that needs to be a lot more. <laughs> That's bare bone, basically. Unless they've cut them all down, that needs picking up. Trees I agree with, but up close detail, I don't know. I don't know what the big fuss about it is. I mean, the rocks look fantastic. The trees down below look all right. The track light... The track line and surrounding scenery is very, very good. It's only in the long distance that things start to drop. But the train itself, very, very highly detailed. A lot for you to look at and enjoy. You have blinds, yes we do. Blinds all functional. I'm going to raise that up again. Uh, where is it? There it is. Blinds all functional. Uh, some blinds as well. That can come from down. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to enjoy. And you're still, again thing behind is I was world famous, everyone knows it. Big beautiful route out in Switzerland. You've got the uh what was it the Alps Express on fly that I can't quite remember the full name of it, but I'm sure it's like the Alps Express, but it's all there. And it's uh all for you to drive. Also, narrow gauge railway. And me being a narrow gauge railway volunteer, just again something to uh to add to the nature I guess. over a kilometre away now from uh, doing Castilla the first stop. Yeah, I could always change if someone went to press the uh, request train button then that would change and therefore we'd be stopping the location on passing through. But it all comes down to the light panel in front of me that will change depending on the uh, on the passenger requirements. So the guard will have a button, the station has a button The other, I presume, is like the signal, so signal like a child train from a remote location somewhere, potentially up in short. go. We get closer, jump the camera out, and we'll just look ourselves in the uh, point of view of the passerby, I guess. There's you raise a bit of track. I mean, like I say, how can you look at this scene here and call it horrible? That I don't get. Like, okay, again, apart from the trees in the background, everything else is all there. I'm trying to think, the original uh, routes, um, I don't know, it's strange there. Sand patch grades, did sand patch grade have the same problem with trees, or did sand patch grade have it all filled out? I'm trying to think what they did, because I think in the distance they had like, so instead of these detailed 3D trees, they had flat 2D trees that just, well, sat there basically. And so, if they were to have something like that, kind of a flat, texture or something to put onto the ground just to fill it up a bit. That would solve, solve every problem basically. Because the trees, without a doubt, is the only complaint people had really. The trees in the background. Everything else, it's all in place. So, I don't know. 
if they had something to kind of fill up a bit, that would change things around. But hey, we've now passed the first train, they're now departing. And we continue over to, uh, well, go through to Peter Molinus. And there you go, stop location, Langvice shaft that. Langvice, we're actually stopping, well, going past through uh, Peist as well. Gosh, this really is express service, ain't it? <laughs> no stopping, no nothing. I can't scroll sometimes on that. Uh, try it. No, I can't. I'll try and extend it in a second. So my one bug for Dovetail Games, the uh, little timetable will change the thing there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's no real trick to it, just uh, hope for the best, basically. But this addition, massively appreciated. Before, the only menu really had was that in the, ex the extra little main menu to press escape, having it built into without having to pause, definitely made for a lot of, uh, a lot easier to manage. Because yeah, that's not working either. Fair enough, we'll just carry on. Like I say, as a driver, technically I'm not really here to, uh, pre-predict whether we're stopping or not. So, Pies we go through. So Peter Mullins we go through Langweiss our first stop, which is about two thirds of the way into our journey. Yep, we come around the mountain. So it's two kilometres to uh, St. Peter Molinus. This is where it gets a bit windy now, so. Yeah, the train make kind of constant right hand turn. So we're going for a left. I actually face the complete opposite direction to the rest of the uh, line later. That 2.1% uh, kilometre, that 2.1 kilometres top left there. Well, for a little while, stop uh, counting. So essentially, the 2.1 kilometres top left there, that's as the crow flies. It's not following the track length, that would be more like 3 or 4 kilometres by track length. But as the crow flies, it takes you on a straight line through. So, as a result, maybe not the most accurate way of counting the uh, distance. Uh, that there. But as a basis, general basis, it does a job, and it does a job well. This is the last of the uh, tunnels. Not for the entire route, but in this little section. And then we get a bit of uh, a bit of external travelling later on. Tunnel, about the tunnel, we have a few small shots as well. There we go. Not very full trains today. Mostly, uh, mostly empty today. There we go, it's another good bridge there. Jump down. Move down and resume in there ish. Yeah, as the sunrise kind of shims on the train there, that's on the train, just brightens up the carriages a bit, turns that red into an orange. Very pretty indeed. So it looks like we're actually going to ride to the Smith Wallace. 
sorry, passed through. Uh, we arrive at Langweiss 657. Got 12 minutes. 12 minutes or so. I think we bang on time. We did leave slightly late from um, short. We did have that slight kind of fiddle of the controls there as we kind of learn our speed requirements. But as we continue our journey, I think that for the most part has now balanced out. So we should get there at worst a minute late. I don't think we're quite on time just yet. We are still a little bit behind our position. one of the easy ways to kind of tell that is the crossover points. What you're aiming for are for the two trains to arrive in the parts at the same time with one another. If that train departs as soon as we cross through, that means they've been waiting there for at least the uh, minutes of passenger loading times when we arrive there. So it takes the presumption that the train stops there and not just uh, pass right through. But given that people are waiting on the platform, I can imagine somebody would have bought that train there. Speed to on this coming up through now. Another train waiting at the platform. So only way runs, I can imagine. Whoops, uh, get all the trains through and into shift rush hours. Well, rush hours, whatever rush they've got out here. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Being so out of the way, what's a rush hour? You just uh, send your train through. For the most part, they're empty services. Rush hour doesn't exist. It never has out here. Okay, then maybe that one person who lives in a, a Rosa or Litzerity has to go to Shiro every day to work. But even then, these trains will never be even half, I don't think. Just 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 adjust our power there. Stop trying from kind of running away from us. There you go, 10 minutes, 4 kilometers. Langweiss we are stopping at today. There you go, got all the uh, trains outside, so G424 Mark II, 50 sun units, uh, what should I say? Uh, top speed 90, kilometers length 12.96 meters, I'll give you information about the uh, bogies in Easter. So, top speed 90, they are fast little trains, this. Fast little trains, these, and the little narrow gauge track. The thing with narrow gauge track is, the wider the track, Fast train can go, but the wider the turning circle has to be. So the benefit of a narrow gauge track is that while it isn't quite as fast, it can make much tighter turns without derailing. So online like this, where the top speed is going to be slow anyway, and now since kind of navigating a void around, having a narrow gauge track does allow for much easier uh, track playing. With, uh, much better effects is kind of line. So passing now through Paist. Second stop, but the uh, non-stop speed right through. 
Again, a few passengers waiting, although these are on the platform one side, so heading towards Short. Their service, presumably either at Langweiss or Litzurity. Speed increases 33 again, back to pass setting 7. Lang Vice speed does drop down to 30. That will do with later. Now, 33 will hold out. Speed test, what, 3 clubs per hour difference? Not really a difference, if anything. But, uh, I mean, what would that 3 clubs be? Potentially kind of scheduling thing. Make sure that trains arrive and stop at the correct times. Because what? I don't know. I presume it's more of a scheduling thing rather than a kind of a set speed limit. Drops down to 25 and 20. Those are definitely speed limit required. But uh, 30 to 33, that feels more like a scheduling thing for me. Could be wrong. I could absolutely be wrong. I mean, I'm not driving the Arosa line. The, uh, well, we have ones here at speed limit sunsets due to track requirements, but uh, three kilometers again. The speed limit distance there, so so small. I'll just make it like 35, if anything, rather than 33. 33 as well, very specific that, very, very specific number. Right, two kilometers to go now, two kilometers to Langweiss. Short now. And that right gives us then a nice straight track. There's one or two more bridges as well left for us to cross. There you go, there's the first one. Let's pop the Langweiss and then as we part Langweiss onto the uh, the mega bridge. I, th I think it's just called the Langweiss Bridge, but the scenery there, the bridge itself. Very spectacular. Too fair though, whenever we pass it, I've only had the looks of the external views. I've never actually sat in the cab for it. Just because it's at this exact I think this time we'll stay in the cab and see what it's like from the uh, driver perspective. To look down at the valley below. Because a lot of this route is much better seen from the external views than the internals. You never know, there may be a few small details that we may be missing out on by only ever looking at the outside. There we go, there's our second bridge. If we stick out here. And yeah, just looking down the world below, well, apart from these <laughs> bare bone trees, there's a lot down there, a lot of scene. It's absolutely beautiful. Whoops. Uh, drive perspective right. I'll jump back in now, only because the uh, station should be in front of us. Oh, and talking about the brakes as well. So in yesterday's video, talking about the uh, braking resistance and all that. Resistance is what I was looking for, so with the train's electric brakes, it adds resistance to the motors, which then allows the train to start slowing down. It doesn't work stationary, because at that point you're adding resistance to a unit that's not moving, therefore the train's going to start rolling backwards, but slowing train down through an electric brake is by adding resistance to your motors to allow the train to slowly, gradually slow down. So yeah, I remember yesterday making a big, big thing about what was the word, what was the word. The word was resistance. 
easy. I knew I'd get there in the end. <laughs> Alright, 600 meters. Let's prepare to stop. Downhill now, so we will... So it's not downhill, it's level. See, you're driving uphill so much. I don't hit level track. I'm not even getting disorientated now. Right, so, well, powers and cuts. That will pick up from now, there we go. Got a minute and a half travel. Yeah, 500 meters. So actually, we're doing alright for time. Better than I thought we were doing. Much better than I thought we were doing. There we go. Minute 20. 300 meters. Bang on right now. Station just visible. Of the uh, capture that. So flying turn. Vacuum brake and control wheel brake. Just to ensure. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll go for the signal. There we go. Perfect. Doors open left. And going to what I was talking earlier. So we stop on time. That train arrives on time. So if both trains matching, it means that we can kind of. Well, we, we continue with minimal delay. So there we'll stop. I'll clear the points, we'll have a green signal, and therefore we can continue our own journey as well. Although they, not like us, stop on the uh, left crossing there, we go a little bit further beyond, but they can't depart until we move because we're still on the points. So there is definitely a bit of a shuffle at the moment. That won't be able to be, well, won't be able to clear until we get moving. So we've got 30 seconds for our departure time. 30 seconds before we uh, make our own way out. I will close the doors in preparation for departure. Got racing brakes ever so slightly. Got 50 meters to the red. That should turn green for us shortly. There we go. A bit of power, and we get moving. Perfect. Next station, uh, Litsurity. We are stopping there. Let's have a look down from the uh, drive perspective, shall we? Gosh, uh, is that a tree? Ah, it's just <laughs> it is a tree. Just uh, on top of the power line there. Interesting uh, choice there from Vet. But everything else, you look down, you've got your lake down below. Oof, look at that, the water flow and everything. Come on, window, go down, go down. There we go. I mean, that's beautiful. That lake. Sorry, that river even. That river, very, very well done there. The water flowing. Full credit to a river there. Very pretty, that. Right. Up to 3.3 on the wheel dial. Six and uphill gradients, so back into the uh, full controls again. Uh, drop down to 30 kilometers per hour now. Oh, 
up to 33 again, back up to 7. It's already just under 2 kilometers from our location. So this is generally the quick bit of the route. A few more stations, a few more frequency. And it's about 10 50 minutes now to the uh, end of the line, 5 minutes from here to the uh, next station. Lodges every few minutes, a little train trundling along. Because I work in the railways here in the UK. I volunteer at railways, I work in the railways. Switzerland or Finland? Do you guys go work in the railways? Switzerland for the scenery, Finland for the air, uh, peace and quiet. But what can I say? Here in the UK, the railways here, they're not perfect, but they, they do the job. They do the job work for them. Very, very fun indeed. Not everyone can say they love their job, but I can hand heart say I do love my job. So I'm not complaining. Life goes on for me. And uh, life goes on pretty cheerily. You've got YouTube, you've got the job, you've got the volunteer railway, that's pretty good for the weekends unavailable. It's all coming together for me now. All slowly coming together for me. <laughs> As always, you guys, the watchers, the viewers, I mean, you're the people who watch the stuff. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing this, that's for sure. Drive the virtual train, talk about my experiences and all that. <laughs> do people really find it interesting? Because if you do, well, massive, massive thank you. And thank you for the, uh, oh, for the love and support, I guess. I'm just going out. Got our train to slow and stop. Screen signal off. Well, screen signal come up next. It's the uh, reds I'm worried about because when we start spanning them, unlike other routes where you can start from checkpoints, you start from checkpoints here as well. They're just 20 kilometres away. Take about half an hour to get there. Not that I know from experience, of course. Right, let's uh, keep the power going. To the very end, I guess. Breaking through right as we enter the platform regions. So it's about 200 metres away from the uh, signal just past that. Cut the power up. And we'll roll now to the other platform. So again, a red signal. I don't know if there's an inbound train. We are about a minute and a half early though, so plenty of time at least. We've taken the uh, the main left-hand platform there, so presumably the answer is no. There's no train that's currently inbound. And they're between here and Erosa. We do have line to ourselves. Doors open. Passengers load and unload. Double check the map to confirm that. The answer is yes. Between here and Erosa. Or at least to in that passing loop. One is clear. Uh, look up ahead, there's now the trains I can see visually. We've already got a few sidings and uh, turn loops, of course. But yeah, apart from that, it looks like we've uh, got it all to ourselves over here. So we go via location, um, perhaps at the Gorb, and the Rosa we arrive at quarter past seven. So about 10 minutes to the end of the line now. 10 minutes to go. Got a minute left until we. Apart from here, so I'll spend a minute looking around, I guess. Uh, yeah, so Litzorotia, uh, Litz I believe it's pronounced Litzorotia. I've probably been butchering that all throughout these uh, couple of videos. 
I mean, well, what do you think? It's a ski resort. You got your uh, resorts and hotels. You got your little station. You got your little pub garden. All you need for a small community, I guess. You got your little tennis courts. Right, go through. Interesting. There's no use of red lights at the back of the train here. Normally, at least in the. Uh, yeah, normally you kind of like a red flashing light at the red train. Obviously, well, presumably because local laws don't require it because the train's so infrequent here. But uh, normally, like a like a tail light, a flashing red light, to just inform that's the red train. But obviously, not in this location. Right, brakes released. And throttle up to seven. Three in the uh, uh, wheel throttle gauge thing. Mm. So, what comes to Hatsul Group? about another kilometer from Hatsul Club to Arosa. This red line gets a bit curvy as well, so get to join the other mountain climb this next bit. So we hit one of the steepest inclines in the route. See the distance between here and Hapsal Group has slightly increasing. It starts to decrease again as we come around this curve. But there are some portions of this track where we actually start going away from our destination than towards it. And that's because in order to get the train up the hill without too much of a steep incline, which is too much of a steep incline, it's a case of continuing train away from your direction, an extended curve loop to the track. Or I come back towards again, so now you can see definitely reaping up the pace there. We've not sped up, we've not slowed down, but the pace that ticker does change throughout. Here you go, it's now almost come to a standstill. Now it's increasing again. So we're getting further away from Hatsul Group, the fact that we're getting closer towards the line. Again, that says the crow flies, not based on the uh, route length. We're nearly there now. It's another six ish minutes. The end line now, six minutes to go. And you do get, you see, you, you get your full hour from start to finish. So from short to arrive starts, one hour. Some services get you to do a little run around at the end as well, so that has a couple more minutes. Well, it may not be the longest route in trains in the world. From the speed limits and, uh, extras in place, it does take its time, and unlike West um, Sunset, Sunset Railway, yeah, West Sunset Railway, which is a heritage railway away from all the main lines, that one, people enjoy it, because you get your heritage, your heritage routes on your modern day timetable, but, uh, I don't know, same speed limits, here you look at a lot more, there's a lot more interesting scenery around here. West Sunset Railway just feels slow, in my opinion. This, again, yeah, narrow gauge track, low to the ground. Almost just a bit faster, really. Alright, Hatsul Grub 
crossover points. Gonna cut the speed slightly. And there you go, race line platform one north. 715. Just over a kilometre. by the, uh, the hills there. There's one more tunnel though between here and the uh, rice up. Pass through that. And yes, exit tunnel. Straight into the platforms. Shortly up to 35. So increase the speed control to wheel to 4. One kilometer, three minutes to go. Locked. Okay, so yeah, the door here locked, not electrically locked. So, on a lot of units, on a lot of locos, even the doors you can't open when the train's in motion or with the park brake released. So, you have electric lock that keeps the door shut based on the train's motion. Not all trains have it though. So, for example, on this occasion, you can open all trains in motion if you really wanted to you jump off the train if it's still moving. Although, come, given that we're now this close to the end of the line, not the occasion I'll jump off the train and then end the scenario out of a spell or something. We'll solder on to the end, not too long to go now. There's your stop points left there, Some little freights, or something here. Head straight, slightly right hand curve. And that round curve takes us right to the end of the line. So non stop round turn through a tunnel and into the platform. I must say, it does help with having a map in front of you as well, give you an idea of where you're following. So, what I'm doing, I'm kind of basing my journey off of the little curves on the track. Basically, different uh, kind of turning points, mountains, roads, that kind of stuff. I can kind of see where I am. Check how our trip progresses. There we go. Welcome to Arosa. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That's. Whoops. There you go. That's lots of me now. We should get in the line there. So 
very gently start decreasing power on the driving wheel there. Since we're only extended train with the freight wagons at the back, we're going to run to the end of the platform. It's opening just shy of the red signal at the end. So level track or cut the power wheel now. Any braking we do directly with the vacuum brake. There you go, doors and off rights. And now passengers disembark. So I've had another look around, so we've got the train uh, shed here. Got a few little sidings, a few different freight yards. Crane as well to get the uh, wagons unloaded. In this occasion, the logs are back, they'll get disconnected and run around. So either, well, either a shunting unit will come here and moves out of the way, or I'm not sure how it works then. Without a shunting unit available, do we then run end of the line, disconnects, and well, you can't really hand shunt, can you? I'm sure they've got some system in place which allows you to move the wagons around, but that's not my job because that's complete the run. Let's see how we performed. Yeah, I'm sure in reality there's some sort of system in place in the Eros line that you can move stuff around quite easily. So up in the south, the northbound road last time, we had the empty wagons at the back of the train, which then we shipped to sure later. Um, yeah, so, there we go, level 74 on the profile, there we go, level 6 on the Eros line, yes we are, level 5 on the train, just a few points off of the uh, next level up. Not bad control of that speed there. At the beginning, you can see it was a bit up and down, but very quickly things got sorted out and very easily ran the uh, smooth uh, duration line there. Stations towards the part of the route, no stations, no stops in the first half or in the first two thirds, even. Stop location as well, not too bad. A little bit off of um, Langweiss, apart from that, everything else pretty good. And of course, enough for a gold medal. So, that brings us to the end of Arosa Southbound. Gets a bit more uh, fun now as we start doing a few different scenarios around the rest line. So next scenario tomorrow will be timber log, lo uh, timber log delivery. Sorry. Um, after that, got a few more shunting runs, of course, and then that will eventually bring us to the end of the rest line on Friday. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. Do leave a like if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon for some more rest line action. Take care. Have a good one, and goodbye.